It's the halfway stage in the 1950s school, and in two weeks' time, the pupils will be sitting their O-levels. At the moment, they seem more interested in each other than academic matters, but this morning's science lesson will soon cool their ardor. The kids go from one set of innards to another. Livers for lunch. Two forkfuls. Come along. Livers not a delicacy. Nadia Freeman's prepared to stomach. Okay, oh, that is, I can't go there. This is minging stuff, man. In the 1950s, refusing to eat your lunch simply wasn't tolerated. But matrons got a secret weapon up her sleeve. Eat it up, boys. I have a tonic if you do not eat it up. Oh, I'm going to be sick. Then I shall give you a tonic if you don't eat it. You will have tonic. You will have tonic. If you have one more mouthful, no. Yeah. Will you use your knife and fork when you do that? You coming for tonic? Mm -hmm. You refused to eat your lunch, didn't you? I Why? Because I do not like it. Liver has nutrients, it has iron. And for girls who are menstruating monthly, it is very necessary. Otherwise, you become ill and anemic. Do you understand? I do. You have to eat things like liver, and things like that because they hold the right nutrients for your health. I have to replace it with something else. Open your mouth, please. Matron's tonic is malt and cod liver oil. Thank you. You may have a drink of water and leave. Open your mouth. Come on. Mm. Swallow it. Oh. Nadia, come on in, please. Can you close the door? I am very concerned about the amount of food that you are not eating. You cannot survive on just bread. I won't have it. Yes, you will. You'll have a drink afterwards. Open your mouth, please. Then you're on detention. You eat some bread, please, before you leave. You're on detention. And I shall speak to headmaster. Hi, I'm Nadia Freeman. This is my family and my house in West on sea I'm short and sweet and talk at 90 miles an hour. I really am looking forward to the sports lessons, funnily enough, because I actually love to play sports. I have played tennis and athletics, but netball is definitely my first love. When I grow up, I think I want to be a lawyer most of all, because I love to argue my point. We, we've brought both the kids up that, that if they feel something is wrong or, or there's an injustice, question it. Piece of cake. I would never have done that when I was at school. Mm. I would never question a teacher. It was a matter of, you will do, and you accepted that. I think that will be quite an eye-opener for her. I'd say I'm very much a giggler when it comes to school or anything, really. I'll giggle at anything that even isn't even funny. I find anything funny, really. So I'll probably be a very big giggler when I'm in there, especially. I don't see how you can play hockey if you haven't eaten any food. When you've eaten that, you will have a drink and you will go. If I have to sit at the end of your table every meal time to make sure that you eat the right things, then I will do. But I cannot have you just eating bread for every meal or potatoes. Now get out of my sight. The food, I just refuse to eat and I won't eat it. I will not eat it while I'm here. No way am I eating spam fritters, liver, or anything like that, or the cabbage, or no, no, <laughs> I'm not eating it. I'd rather get told off or detention. What were the causes and consequences of the Indian mutiny? By the end of this lesson, everybody should have a 
detailed list of the causes. History in the 1950s was often very dull. The teacher droned on and on, while the pupils wrote reams and reams of notes. In 1848, and the other one... GCSE classes are much more discussion-based. The emphasis is on interpretation of historical sources, rather than regurgitating facts and essay writing. Now, let's have a look at tensions between the East India Company, the British rulers, and the Indians, whether they be Muslim, <coughs> Hindu, or Sikh. History master so Simon Raquel is teaching the kids how animal grease on ammunition cartridges sparked off the Indian mutiny. So you've got thousands of men, you're outnumbered five to one, you've got thousands of Indian troops, Muslim and Hindu, all right, OK, what should we do? Let's cover it with, with fat. So they've got to put it in their mouth and tear it off. For now, one pupil, it seems to have gone in one ear warm. and out the other. What was the problem with the cartridges? Uh, the problem with the cartridges was they had pig fat on them. Was it? And? And the Muslims didn't eat meat. And the Hindus didn't agree with, no, they didn't like what the kind of food the pigs ate. So that's all over the place. All over the place. Think about it. You've got... Messed up. <laughs> you've messed up big time. Think about it. What was on it? You said there was... Pig. Pig fat. fat. Who does not eat pigs? The, hin the Hindus. The Muslims. No! The Muslims. Right. Okay. Sir? Sir? And what about the cow fat? Oh. You said it. The, the, Hin, the Hindus didn't like the food that the cows uh, <laughs> They They were opposed to grass. Yeah, OK. They didn't like grass. Right. Oh, think about it, boy. Come on, think. Why is it? This is why I didn't want you to ask me, sir, because... I know, which is why I'm asking you. <laughs> I could see that flash of fear across your face. Right. Andy Wall needs Go to use some slowly. wizardry if he's to dig himself out of this hole. My name's Andy Warren. I live in this house in Ashton Line in Manchester. And you could say I'm a magical kind of guy. We tried to say some magic. What's the eight of spades? OK, now watch. If we take the eight and we rub it, can you feel that? Can you feel it? Because look, I bet you can. I first got into magic when I was about three or four. I think it was my neighbour who got me into it. He showed me some tricks and I think it developed from there really into showing people on the streets. And my main ambition in life is probably to take magic to a whole new step and make myself famous from it. <laughs> if I could use my magic in any exam, it'd be maths exam, because then I could magic up the answers instead of writing drivel on the papers. The Muslims... The Muslims didn't eat meat. Didn't so, eat... Pigs. pigs. OK, right, let's move on. Hindus. They didn't agree... No, they didn't like grass. <laughs> That's what you said before. That's I was being sarcastic. <laughs> Warn. They didn't I'm eat so what confused. animal? The Hindus Cows. didn't eat what? Right, why? Because. I'm sorry, I've got a really good way of remembering which one's which. Well, please tell me. Because, okay, right. Right. Hindu is like Hindu, so that's like moo. So that's like a cow. And then it's like Muslim has got an O in it, so that's like oink, pig. I think we go back to square one. Okay, right, let's stay focused. A lot of them are finding history very difficult. They're not used to someone lecturing them for 40 minutes, telling them what happened in a particular period, uh, whilst they frantically write down notes. For GCSE, it's a lot more interesting. They're using a range of sources, but uh, hopefully some of them are getting it. Go. Go. The girls show off their vaulting skills. Wake up, you numbskulls! The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of... God. It has come to the headmaster's attention that the pupils have been flouting one of the basic school rules. He is not happy. There's a six-inch rule in this school. You know, I know. You do not 
get closer than six inches, boy and girl. That is perfectly clear in the rules you've got. We have emotions and animal instincts, of course we have. But also, and as we are hearing, we are people of intellect. The scientist tells us we are homo sapiens. We've got the power of reason. And we have to control our emotions. I want to see some self-control here. I don't want to see people running around, embracing each other and squawking in a selfish fashion. Thank you. Mr McTavish is particularly concerned with the antics of one boy, Joe McCready. Keep up, please. His latest crime is an incident involving the English teacher, Liz Perdue. She has told me that last night she went into the corridor. There were a crowd of boys there. You had your back to her. She said that she wanted to come through and she said words to the effect of, do you expect me to climb over you? And you, with your back to her and facing the rest of the boys, said words to the effect, I wouldn't mind that. She was shocked. She, after all, is a lady, as well as being a member of the teaching staff of this school. So I have a member of staff who is insulted, as I said, a lady in a sexual way. You, at 16, almost trying to impose yourself on her. You are isolated until su after supper this evening. You will do your lessons in a different room. You will have your meal by yourself. You will be escorted if you wish to go to the toilet. If I am not satisfied, you will be sleeping by yourself in a dormitory tonight, in an empty dormitory. Do you understand all that? Yes, sir. Mr. War, I don't think he should wear the King's School blazer while he is under punishment. Shake it off, please. What I'm punished for was uh, for something I said to Dr. Pidu, which wasn't meant the way it was taken, and what I said to her, and what was said to the headmaster is not the same and he said it you know it's not going to be the exact words but it's not even the same meaning yeah. I never said I wouldn't mind that I said you could if you needed to and that's what I said we have our introduction to the 12 CCF was an integral part of 1950s education for grammar school boys math teacher Austin Vince is a firm believer in its benefits the combined cadet force is a great uh, vehicle for developing all sorts of uh, non-academic and non-sporting qualities in the pupils. Most obviously, uh, teamwork, uh, self-reliance, a sense of initiative, uh, hopefully through the structure that's afforded by the military unit, some sense of loyalty, loyalty upwards to the leader, sideways to your compatriots and downwards to those that you're in charge of. <laughs> Look how close he is! So I want to see you do that. So I can't actually, I'm not an Who thinks they can who thinks they can touch the top um coping as it's known? Whenever possible, Mr. Vince likes to lead by example. Um I'd like to have a go then. This is quite exciting, gentlemen. <laughs> right, next time. While the boys climb the wall. The girls are preparing for a synchronised PE display. What we're going to do, gentlemen, is get the whole of our team over that wall, OK, and we have to do it as fast as possible. The technique is quite simple. We set somebody down at the bottom of the wall, maybe um, the beefcake, OK, and he'll send somebody <laughs> springing, springy up onto the wall. One thing's for sure, that with a, with a bit of beef behind, uh, behind you, uh, a guy with a bit of spring would probably make it, OK? And reverse. And reverse. Right. Here we go. Beef plus brains equals 
Twelve foot success. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes! Help him up! Help him up! Make it steady! Make it steady! That's it! Help the guy up! Man. He's not... <laughs> Mars, you're such a big baby! I don't know how we won the war! Thank God when Britain stood alone, it wasn't an army of... cream cake eating limp wristed nobodies like you! <laughs> Go! 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 Who's going up next? Okay. Here we go. Off you go then, Warren. Get ready, Unwin. That's it, Unwin. That's it. That's it, good. <laughs> well done, Miles. At least you made a gesture. Right. Now, the rough idea is that now you can get the guys in the gang who are not that springy, and with the beefcakes up a thrust, and the two guys at the top, the non-springy guys, and if you've got any B Pillsbury type blokes in the squad, okay, they'll all get up with the one bloke on the floor and the two blokes up there. Very good, Nadia. Well done, Claire. Oh. We keep sending the whole squad up until at the end, we've got one bloke left on the ground. You must make sure that the bloke who's left last isn't actually your biggest lard ass. OK? <laughs> or else he's going to be spending the whole day going... Ah! 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 OK? It's got to be somebody with a bit of spring at the end. OK? P.E.'s over, and it's time for some female bonding, 1950s style. Some of the fashions are quite exquisite. It's the new improved cooker. Yeah. Look at the one that every is. housewife wants. She's got a low set. She's really, really enjoying it's just how happy you are. she is. Oh my, planned for a, a family. family. Oh no, no. What is? Basically, this is learn how to be a housewife, housewife book. book. Yeah. And mother. And mother. And still look beautiful. With a really skinny waist. And have no waist while popping out children. How the death is, yeah. Are you a housewife? <gasps> I are. Oh, I'm doing this Are you question. a successful woman? Okay, okay, okay. Go on then. If you meet a pretty woman in an identical dress, do you A, feel annoyed, B, amused, or C, embarrassed? Annoyed. Annoyed? Annoyed. <laughs> Supposing that you haven't a career, is your reaction to women who have envy because they've got so much more than you, pity because they've got so much less, or admiration because they've got the best of both worlds? Admiration. Admiration. If someone tells you a really naughty story that <gasps> shocks you, would you give a light laugh and sidetrack the conversation, <laughs> stay outright that you hate blue jokes, or blush and pretend you didn't get it? Blush and pretend you didn't get it. I think you're going to be the perfect housewife. I think so. <laughs> MacReady has already broken his isolation order. Where have you been? I want to get my letters. I beg your pardon. I want to get my letters, sir. From where? From my dormitory. You do not go in the dormitories without permission. Sorry, sir. You keep saying sorry. Every time I speak to you, you're saying sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. It doesn't make it. It doesn't mean a fig. Now you could have come and asked me if you could go up in the dormitory, and secondly, you could have also thought before you sat down that you needed your letters to reply to. It's about time you started thinking about what you're supposed to be doing. I didn't realise where you was, sir, so... I actually left a note on the table as well, in case. Yeah. Sit down. I shall be seeing you in the headmaster's room during tomorrow. I will let you know what time. You do not have any free time this evening. When we've finished letter writing, you will go back to the house and stay in your dormitory. I'll do that. I beg your pardon? I'll do that. I'll do that, sir! sir! The trouble with youth today, and your type of youth, you'll get too much money and have too much time spending your money. It wasn't until the late 50s that the modern teenager arrived when teddy boys and beatniks, complete with quiffs and goatee beards, threatened the established order. The beatnik? Tell me he's real cool, man. Any hint of teenage rebellion had to be nipped in the bud. Corporal punishment was the headmaster's response to anything hip like smoking. Michael, come this way. And you've been caught smoking in the playground? This is an offence for which you are punished with the slipper. 
You realize that you deserve this? Yes, sir. The ultimate sanction, the cane, was made illegal in the 1990s. Pick up the clubs. Joe McCready is taking King's harshest punishment. Step back against the wall. Raise the clubs to arms, length, shoulder level. I'm starting my stopwatch now. Three minutes of sheer pain. <clears throat> Concentrate. Stop moving. Keep it going. Come on, straighten those arms. One minute, 20 seconds. I would never give a punishment to any child that I couldn't do or be prepared to undergo myself. I spent some time in the gym this morning with Mr. Daplin in the position you're in with those two. He tells me I went red in the face. I have more body weight than you, but I went to break point with them because I wouldn't want to see anybody doing something that I wasn't prepared to suffer ultimately myself. Get a bit of courage. I want to see you all. Mr. Perry handles a delicate topic with the boys. I've got to tell you this. I want no beastliness in this house. Wake up, you numbskulls! In the 1950s, all grammar schools had a school song. King's is no exception. Just because I'm playing the piano, it doesn't mean I can't see what you're doing, Nicola. Do I make myself clear? Right. I think I don't have to say any more. Right. Let's do that one again. Remember, open your mouths. Nicola Greenhalgh can be a handful. She has an A star in attitude and has been in constant trouble from day one. Turn round, walk down to the wall and stay there. Do you wish to argue with me further with this? No. That would be extremely unwise. Okay. Greenhouse, get out! We were having a bit of fun there, and you spoiled it, and I think you did that on purpose. Get out now! I'm here, I'm lucky, get out! Can we just do the last line? Dorando Discimus. Right, I would like you to go and see the headmaster, please. Uh, you will tell him that I have sent you to him. Will you go, please? Okay. I beg your pardon, come back. The answer is not OK. The answer is... OK, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the girls' dorms, Matron and Dr Badu are searching out forbidden items. Since day one, it's been a game of cat and mouse between Matron and the girls over the hidden contraband. But by the end of the search, the girls still have the upper hand. Their stash under the floorboard remains undiscovered. Would you ask the young lady to come in, please? Come here, young lady. Why is this young lady here, Mr. Heath? Uh, just, you can just face me. She is here because I thought that she was not giving the music lesson it's the respect it was due, and that she was giggling and talking to her neighbour. And Let I did warn guess. her. I did warn yes. her on several occasions that um, retribution would follow if she didn't behave. 
who gave a fair warning. Your neighbour, I wonder who that will be, Harriet Rykins, by any chance? Yes, I came past when you were singing, you, plural, were singing, and it sounded incredibly good. I've never heard, in 30, whatever it is, eight or nine years I've been teaching, I have never heard a school, a, 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 a form sing like that. And then suddenly I've got you in front of me for giggling. Up until now, Nicola has remained defiant, but not today. I wasn't, I say, I need to, can I speak please? I'd say I wasn't talking to Harriet at all through the lesson. I was giggling at the fact that I couldn't reach a high note and at the words because I can't actually sing the songs. I don't know them myself. I wasn't talking to Harriet and I wasn't talking to Henri Henrietta who was sat next to me. And so I was giggling at myself. Have you had them singing individually? No. I haven't. Could you take her to the hall yes. and just see what her range is like? Yes. Certainly. Right. Go along with Mr. Heath. Me. Alright, just stand there, will you? Let's try a scale to R. Alright, here we go. Well, that's quite a good sound. Let's try again. Well, it's a little sharp at the top, but, um, no? Does that hurt? No. Following on from their lesson on the Indian mutiny, the pupils are about to learn how they did in a test. In two weeks' time, you'll be sitting down. In two weeks' time, you'll be sitting down to take a history examination and at the moment, a lot of you are going to be very embarrassed by the results. Rebecca, can you step up here, please? Hello, I'm Rebecca Woodward, and I'm from Gloucestershire, and I'm a country girl at heart, and this is my entire village. I live in a place called Swanley and it's only got eight houses, which I don't really think it even counts as a village, but you can be whoever you want to be, just be yourself and it's great and you all get on with each other because you know everybody and everybody knows you. I belong here. I'm not really sure about what the school would be like, but I'm sure I'd be quite strict and very different from school nowadays. I've got a vision of a board rubber going onto my head or something, but I'm sure I'd be fine. When I do the O-level exam, I imagine it'd be a bit simpler than what has progressed to now, so I think I'd probably do better than what I have done now. <laughs> In answer to the question, where did the mutiny take place? I'm not talking about the Indian mutiny. You said what? You wrote what? Can't remember, sir. Palestine, Rebecca. What is your village doing for an idiot, Rebecca? <laughs> Let's have a look. Can you point to Palestine? Um. Have a look. Oh, is yeah. it there? Yeah, that's enough. Palestine is there, near Madras. Can you see it written? No. No. In the 1950s, ritual humiliation was a tried and tested teaching technique. Oh, where are we? Palestine. Right, Rebecca, sit down. Now, Mr Unwin and Emma, can you step to the front of the class, please? And Mr Sweeney and Mr Warren, could you step up to the front? Turn this side. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have both ends of the intellectual spectrum on display here, and it's for you to guess who are the winners and who are the losers. Uh, Warren, it's not funny. Now, unless by some miracle 
Mr. F Perry can perform an operation to fuse your two brain cells into some sort of working organ, we have a problem with you even finding the examination hall. It's not funny, it's worrying. You both got 5 out of 26. These two both got 21 and a half, which is extremely good, and they deserve a round of applause. <laughs> it is a very straightforward examination. And don't get confused between grass cows <laughs> and pigs. Right, sit down. My predicted grade in GCSE history is a B. Um, I think the reason I struggled so much in the Indian Mutiny test was because the night before in prep uh, we had to read like about 20 pages of pure rubbish that I just couldn't take in at all. Um, there were so many dates um, you, you just couldn't take them all in at all but some people were, some people were fine with it but for some reason I seemed to struggle with it and just couldn't seem to take any of it in. I certainly didn't want to share this with them in class, but in fact I'm delighted with the progress a lot of them have made. They're starting to be able to write good essays, structure a coherent argument, and with the skills they've learnt at uh, GCSE of being able to analyse sources, well in fact they've got the best of both worlds. <laughs>all contraband will be put into it and nothing more will be said. Do you understand? Yes, Please go. I shall be gone for 30 minutes. The girls have a difficult decision to make. They decide to appease Matron by giving up their non-essential essentials. Right, put all this shit in there. Well, really the basket's out there. Has anyone got any other stuff like, that they don't really nothing need? There now. In their rooms, did the mascara go? It did, didn't it? Have we got rid of everything now? God, if she comes upstairs, we're going to have to go up. Hey! <laughs> I've come back and I've found several items. Six fine perfumes. Um, Prowl. A deodorant. Vaseline. Hair removers. Razors. Born Lippy, which I feel must belong to Nicola. Eyeshadows and tissues, brushes, and the famous eyeliner. Quite pleased with that. <laughs> I'm better than I thought it was going to be, I really am. <laughs>
and then I take her back to school and it's lovely. I like to think of myself as a bit of a good girl, so I haven't been caught for too many things at school, but the things I have done at school I don't think could be repeated on camera. My headmaster would go mental. A what? A wee-wee. How common. So both of you are up for early in the morning. I shall wake you at quarter past six. And any more rattle, the rest of you will follow. In the 1950s, delicate subjects were rarely handled head on. Right. I want to um, talk to you about something that um, is not easy for me to talk about and probably even less easy for you to listen to, perhaps. It's a serious matter. Matron has reported to me that one of the laundry ladies has been to see her to report soiled sheets, which I can only describe perhaps in another way as sticky sheets. Now, I want to see you all basically because I've got I've got to tell you this, I want no beastliness in this house. It has never been a part of schoolhouse, and it never will be. There just isn't any room here for that sort of thing. We're told in the scriptures that self-abuse, self-gratification is wrong. And it is. So you're going to go to bed in silence, and I will not be saying prayers tonight. Prayers will be very personal. In some cases, it may be to assist you to fight weakness. If not, fine. If you are strong, then please pray for others. But it has no place in this house. Beastliness. Remember that. Has MacReady gone too far? But no, that's not good enough for you, is it? Pay attention! Stand up straight. Breaking the six-inch rule has earned Henrietta, Harriet and Thomas Jewell an early morning swim in the unheated pool. Jewell, the reason you're that end is to keep you away from your uh, lady love. This is to cool your emotions. Do you understand, boy? Girls, get in the pool. Shoulders in. Shoulders in. Go! Cold swims and cold showers were common punishments in the 1950s. That is one, Henrietta. That is two, Jewel. This time, it appears to have done the trick. The water is absolutely freezing. You can hardly breathe. <laughs> I was in my bed about 15 minutes ago, and I got out of bed and Matron, like, shoved me. And I was like, what the hell? It's woken me up, and I think I have actually learned a lesson. So it's worked in that respect. For the rest of the morning, it's lessons, lessons, and more lessons. I must repeat myself like Polly Parrott. I want the Shakespeare, the blue exercise books, something to write with, and your full attention. If you wish to take your blazers off, do so. Now I am going into the lesson. Make sure there's a heading, now declensions. Make sure you've got the date, you've underlined the heading, and you've underlined the date. I promise I will trick you into understanding this, OK, if it's the last thing I do. Probably will be the last thing I do, it's going to take so long. Every afternoon, the kids get an hour of free time. While they are relaxing, guess who's in more trouble? McCready! 
Stop. Put that ball down now. Right, McCready. I said you can't play with the ball again today. That was your punishment for kicking it towards the building, and which was obviously when we've got all this land, you could kick a ball anywhere there, no one say a thing. Yeah? Because you're the lazy, whatever it is inside your brain, you thought, no, I'll kick it towards the building. And then afterwards, of course, you regretted it. Yeah. Okay? The line was drawn. I said, right, okay, here's the simple sanction. No more rugby ball for you today. Simple. Tomorrow, clean slate, start again. But no, that's not good enough for you, is it? Right, what you're going to do now is come with me, okay? And you're going to stand over here. I need to keep you away from the other children so that you don't muck them up. Mr Vince was the only teacher McCready hadn't alienated. <sighs> Everyone gets into trouble, McCready. There's all these little things happen. That doesn't matter. But if then, when, you, when you're on a little bit of a sanction, you then rub our faces in it. I have to do something about it. I cannot let it go. Everyone's seen. You're insane. I cannot believe it. Now you're in, you've, you've just earned yourself a detention, which is a load more trouble than you deserved for the, for the initial defence. You brought it on yourself. It's incredible. Right, see this white feather? Sit down there, OK, and I'm going to be over here with the other people. I want you to stay here, OK, for about half an hour. I want you to study this horizon here. And I want you, in the time that you're alone, to reflect on the simple, small thing that you did wrong that was nothing, that no one would have remembered. And now I'm really upset and I'm personally offended. And our relationship has suffered, which you never had to. Stay here and cool down. I'll come back with some water later on. MacReady's behaviour is getting to the other kids. I think it's really mean to say, but I think to a certain extent he brings it upon himself. I think he's very intolerant and so doesn't really know when to just stop. His discipline's going to get worse because he, get, he keeps on getting told off and all that day by day, so he's just going to lose it even more and he will end up in his own dorm on bread and water, I think, by next week. MacReady is hiding the evidence of yet another crime. He smashed the cup of water Mr Vince gave him. I'm going to get so in trouble now. So go over there and apologise now. Before he gets to you. Yeah, go and say sorry before he... Before I ain't he... got nothing to apologise for. I can't drop the cup. Just say, mate, look, I'm really sorry I dropped the cup. I broke the cup. Instead, instead of him say, coming just, to you and Instead then... of him coming to you and going, oh, McCready, why did you, why did you smash the cup up? Just go over and say, I'm really sorry, sir, I, I broke the cup. Yeah, but I should have just said that anyway instead of throwing all the police over. Yeah, well, oh, For once, MacReady takes some advice. Say something that'll calm me down. Um, I don't know. I don't so. I didn't think you'd uh, find it to be honest. That's why I threw it away because I didn't think you'd find it. I didn't want to get in any more trouble. But now I think I'm actually going to be in more. So. Um, Guess yeah. what. One word I want to hear. Sorry. OK, lead on. Sorry? Lead on. Like, I apologise and he sent me away, but I think I'm still going to get... He's going to tell the other teachers or something, because there's no way I can have to stand in the field for an hour for kicking a rugby ball and then smashing a the cup, I'll just get told to apologise. Nadia Freeman still isn't eating properly. She's been struggling with the 1950s food for two weeks. I am concerned about her health uh, if she continues to do this because the meals, although quite pale and uninteresting, as it was in the 50s, is not tasteless by any means. Um, and I think she is generally a fatty eater. After a discussion with Matron, Nadia decides it's time to leave. upset that I'm leaving because I did want to stay here, I did want to see it through and I'm going to miss everyone and I'm going to miss doing the O-levels and experiencing that but no, I, I am relatively happy I'm going home but still I, I am upset I'm not staying.
Nadia is the first of the 30 pupils to leave King's School. Next time, the kids sit their mock O levels. Left, left, right, left. There's a visiting dignitary for Foundation Day. Good day, Miles. That's it. That's it. We're just a little touch there. <laughs> and is it the end of the road for Macready? Here, we have standards. You have failed to maintain those standards.